But here's the deal. As, as I've, here's the sad part. As I preach, as I'm getting ready to start ministering to, to you beautiful people and all those watching by Facebook, I guarantee you I am preaching right now to someone here today or listening in that wants to quit. That wants to quit. Yeah. You feel like giving up. You sure do. You feel like throwing in the towel. Giving up. Quit. And so I, I'm, on, I'm on an assignment today. I don't know about y'all, but I came to give him praise today. I, I'm on an assignment straight from God. I believe what I'm preaching here today. Because I think all of us, if you'll be honest, at one point in time in your life, you wanted to quit. You wanted to give up. You wanted to throw in the towel. Enough's enough. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So, I'm here today on an assignment from God. And I believe this. If you don't, I don't care. I'm on an assignment from God to remove the quit option from your life. To remove the quit option from your life. So, if I, if I look like a mad day, I'm not. I'm happy. I probably just got veins pop out every once in a while. Maybe you're here today and you feel like quitting in your marriage. Mm -hmm. You feel like quitting faith. Yep. Quitting church. Oh, watch this. Even quitting life. But I want to speak this over you. How many of you are thankful that Jesus Christ, and I mean what I'm saying, that while he was on the cross, he didn't quit. He didn't stop. He didn't give up. He, come on, he didn't throw in the towel. He didn't say, oh, there, there's 600 people spit on him. But he didn't say, oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm through with church. I'm so thankful and if I'm the only one that to give him praise today, I'm just going to give him praise. I am so thankful while he was on the cross, he didn't quit. He didn't give up. He didn't stop. He said, I'm going to finish for everything my daddy sent me to do. Somebody give him praise here today. If you mean it. If you mean it. How many of you glad you're saved? You're not going to hell. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I'm born again. And I ain't ashamed of it either. I ain't ashamed of it today. So remove the quit option from your life. Some of you are here today, and you're about done. <laughs> you're about done. I'm so thankful that Jesus didn't give up. So here's what I want to do. I want to start a series today. I'm big on series. I love series. They feed off each other, and I just love it. It helps me stay in the vein of heaven. I want to start a series today on the subject. It's called this. Pursue God, and don't quit in the dip. Pursue God. Everybody say, pursue God. Come on, everybody, everybody else say, pursue God. Yeah, part one, here it is. Don't quit in the dip. There's the rest of it. Come on, we're going to participate, all right? This is not First Baptist of Frigidaire. We talk when I preach, hey amen? I want y'all to get this stuff, all right? So don't quit. Look at your neighbor, six feet apart. Don't quit in the dip. Come on, tell somebody. If they ain't paying no attention, look at somebody. Don't quit in the dip. Yeah. Now, if y'all really like this, I'm up here. I can say, don't quit in the dip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can just do what y'all want to do. I'm just it's my sermon. I can preach it how God told me to preach it. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. Now, church, check this out. As I preach right now, now we're blessed. We're blessed. But as I am preaching and ministering to you right now, listen to this. Over 10,000 churches have quit. Ten, as I'm right now, 10,000 churches, over 10,000 churches have quit. They've gave up. They threw in the towel during this pandemic. It hurts my heart. Check this out. 782,038 marriages have stopped. Did y'all hear me? I, you, you check out Google. He's a, he tell truth. <laughs> this is United States. 782,038 marriages have stopped. They quit. They gave up. And they've ended in divorces in 2020. 782,038. Guys, listen to me. 800,000 people. Jimmy, listen. 800,000 people die by suicide in this world each year. 800,000 die of suicide. They stop. They quit. They give up. They throw in the towel. You know what? Watch this. That, that is one death every 40 seconds. One death every 40 seconds. And it's not just older people either. 
Listen, if we don't wake up, we live, I know we live in the Bible Belt. But that don't impress me one bit. I think there's more demonic activity up in the Bible Belt. We got to wake up. Right now, somebody may be here today. Sitting right beside you. Get ready to stop. Get ready to give up. Feel the Holy Ghost up here on this stage. So here's what I'm here. I've got a word straight from God. Don't quit in the dip. I can't stop. I won't stop. I won't listen. I will remove the quit option from my mind. I'm not going to. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. If God is truly in me, like we preach and say, then everything else, watch me. I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, we need each other to not quit. Not quitting. Listen, whether you believe me or not this morning, listen, we're all in a battle. Look, lean in. Listen to I cannot preach that baby. Don't y'all worry about that. I can now preach that baby. Somebody say, he can now preach that baby. I sure, I sure can. Listen, it's okay. At least that baby's in church. I'm going to, listen, we're going to reverse this curse. And listen, you say, well, what about the nursery? What about all this? If they're old enough to be saved, they're old enough to sit in church. I ain't even part of my sermon, but thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, we're all in a battle. We're in a battle. We're in a battle for our families. I have to fight like hell for my family. We're in a battle for our children. And I have to fight like hell for my children. And I don't want to serve the devil notice today. Hallelujah. You can take your hands off my babies, off my grandchildren, off this church, off this community, off this nation, off this world. I need somebody to believe me today. We got to believe you got to fight like hell sometimes. Woo! Yay! You gotta fight it. Ryan, you're just too emotional. No, let me let's just talk a little bit. All right, y'all ready? You can't be a proper little prayer person. I'm telling you, the devil will eat you for supper. You gotta pray in the Holy Ghost. You gotta know how to fight your battles. It's more than a song, it's more than drums, it's more than a guitar. It's gotta be living inside of you. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, you you got to fight for your marriage. <laughs> Even for this from the couch. <laughs> Can I be honest with y'all about something? What if I told you you're in a battle right now over your very soul? Over your very soul. Over your Satan wants to do more than just stop you or kill you or destroy you. Watch this. That's too easy. That's too easy. You know what? I, I wrote this down in my, my purse notes. I said, I know Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How many of y'all? John 10, 10, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I, I know we say that, but I believe Satan's favorite words. Here it is. I believe Satan's favorite words is, I quit. I'm done. I give up. I throw in the towel. It ain't worth it. You mean to tell me if you're truly born again saved? The battle you're in is not worth heaven's gain. You, you've got to get yourself out of the way and let the kingdom start making its way through you. It's all about the, the kingdom, not your kingdom. Whew, I felt the Holy Ghost on that one. Satan will do anything and everything, anything and everything he can to hear all of us. All of us say these words, I quit. I quit. But I stopped by, I told, wrote that in my, I preached myself happy on Fridays. I stopped by 3145, Elkhorn Road. Y'all help me preach. Y'all hear me say it all the time to tell somebody who wants a breakthrough, who needs a word from God, don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit because of the problem. Don't quit. 10,000 churches have locked their doors. That bothers me. But they'll get up there and say, greater is he. It is in me, it is in us, he is in the world. Y'all know the answer? <laughs> I, heard, I heard Dr. W.A. Curzo say this word. They were looking for a, a, a drum player one time at the church. And so what the church did, they didn't even have a set of drums. They went out and bought a set of drums and set the set of drums up in the church. 
They started walking around the drums saying, God, I don't know who's going to fill it, who's going to play it, but God, somebody's got that calling upon their life. And then they went out. They just didn't say to God, bring them. God, bring them. God, bring them. No, he says, go we there. Four. And I'm telling you, the next thing you know, five people from the church stepped up and said, I can play drums. I can play drums. I can play drums. I can play drums. Listen, we pray and pray and pray and pray. I'm going to ask you, when are you going to go, 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 go? My God. Ooh, don't quit in the dip. <laughs> Satan will give anything to have you to go back to drugs. Yes, he would. <laughs> Satan would give anything to have some of you go back to the old bottle and drink. Yes. Satan would give anything to see a bunch of whoremongers. Are y'all okay? This is not, I'm telling you, I got a word from the Lord today. Yes. Satan would give anything to see you go back and be what you once was. Even Satan is threatened by your life. I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. Satan should be threatened by your life. When you get up, when you walk into a room, when you stand up, when you open your mouth, hell should say, oh no. There should, you should be a threat to hell. Huh. But sometimes in your life, you got to man up. You got a woman up, you got a youth up, you got to stand up, and you got to look the devil in his eyes and say, no, 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 not today, Satan. Not today. You let go of my children, you let go of my grandchildren, you let go of my family, you let go. I'm taking authority back what God has given me. And I stopped by today to tell somebody, it's time to pray it up and look the devil in his eye and say, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. What God started in you, he's going to finish. How many of y'all believe that? Oh, you believe that's just a verse in the Bible? Watch this. I'm going to go deeper. How many of y'all have claimed that? Amen. See, that's the difference maker. You can have Bible study after Bible study after Bible study after Bible study, small group, Sunday school class, worship, all this stuff. Watch it. Until you activate it. Until you activate it. And we got a lot of people just sitting. I'm telling you, there's enough Holy Ghost in this room today. If Paul and Silas are two that can mess up a, a place, two or three hundred can really take South Central back. Are y'all ready? But you can't quit in the dip. <laughs> you can't quit in the dip. I'm looking at some of you. You won't even look at me. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. You're a valuable person. Here's what God just spoken to me. I'll call them home when I'm ready for them. <laughs> That's what God just spoke to me. Yeah, well, I'm just going to end it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to quit. It's all about me. And this, that, and the other. I'm telling you, you will die on God's appointed time. God will call you home when he's ready for you. But until then, let's give hell some hell. Until then, let's, let's rise up, church. You say, Brian, you're talking like a head coach. I feel like it today. I feel like it today. Listen, listen at me. It's time to score. Some of you quitting. I'm calling it out. Randy is here. It's in me. He's in the world. Oh, really? Won't you, won't you prove it? I'm going to get back over to my notes. You can quote the Bible all day, Willie. You said this yesterday. And by the way, great job at the men's breakfast. Amen. Great, 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 great job. I'm so proud of God in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can pray it all day, but until you believe it. Amen. Faith without works is. Y'all know the scripture, but are you doing any work? Come on, you can't quit in the dip. Do y'all expect, expect just to walk along and nothing ever hits you? How strong would you be? How strong would you be if it just, it just sunshined all the time? I'd be behind the boat on a little, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Laying out like a beach whale, you know what I'm saying? It never rained in your life. You never had no problems in your life. You never had no challenges in your life. How strong would you really be? Maybe God allows challenges and problems to come along in your life to see what kind of faith man, faith woman you really are. Woo! Preach that, preach. I think I will. And here's what I said God wrote. If you ever make your mind up and remove the quit option in your life, the battle is really won. I've seen this people who on their deathbeds, y'all have too, on their deathbeds. 
Boy, they started off, I'm going to live. I'm gonna, and all of a sudden you go back and you say, Brian, I'm tired. I'm giving up. And as soon as they say, I quit, it's not long before that angel comes and gets them. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. But there's something about a man on his back or a woman on his back says, you know what? God spoke into my spirit, I shall live. Blood shall line up. There's something powerful when God's people come together, touching and agreeing, and say, no matter what demon in hell, no matter what hell I'm up against, no matter what's going on in my life, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm not going to quit in the deal. Somebody give God praise in this house today. Don't just sit there. Give me praise. Hallelujah. I'm telling y'all something's happening up in here today. I'm not going to quit in the dip. I'm not going to quit in the dip. I'm not going to stop. The devil can't stop me. I'm strong today. You're just loud. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I believe what I preach. And if I didn't, I resign as your pastor today. Either you believe it or you'll quit in the dip. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's real. Hang on a second. It's real. If not, let's go home. Because I'm not going to waste no oil. This stuff is not real. That's why I almost quit the church. Because all I seen was fussing and fighting and bickering and stinking business meetings that you ask unfaithful people to make faithful decisions. Hmm. How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? Amen. If you don't, ra don't raise your hand. I don't, I, it's, I'm just telling you what I feel. Whew. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. I'm going to try to make it through this. Hebrews 10, 39. Watch what it says. But we are not. Look. But we are not of them who draw back. <laughs> yeah. But we are not. Of them who draw back, who quit, who give up, who throw in the towel, who stops. I'm not, I'm not just somebody. I've got an anointing on my life and God wants me to carry it out here on earth. Some of you are aborting the promises of God because you're drawing back. I believe churches will stand before God and give an account on the anointing and the gifts and the callings of God because why didn't they activate them? Why didn't they use them? You know why? Because we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable. It's out of our norm. Woo. I'm not drawing back. I'm not drawing back. Because here's what I know. If you're truly saved and born again, you won't be ashamed of him. You won't be ashamed of him. You won't put me in a room full of atheists and I'll give God praise. Put me with a bunch of agnostics. You can't prove God's real. I sure can. You know how I know God's real? He lives up in me. I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I can speak life and blessings. I can call down rain from heaven. I can walk on water. I can lay hands upon the sick. I'm telling y'all. Either it's real or it's not. Either it's real or not. It's real or not. It's real or not. It's real or not. I'm, I love the scripture because some of us start, start off all really strong. Start off all really good. Start out, yeah, that's right. You must have read my notes. You're on fire for God. But somewhere along the way, trouble hits. Problems start rising up. Hell starts breaking loose up in your life. Come on, somebody. Life, work, church, family, COVID-19. Life, work, church, family, COVID-19. Oh, they don't stop. They, <laughs> you throw in the towel. But I love this. It says, I'm not of that generation. I'm not of those kind of people. God is looking for faithful people. 
God's looking for people who's not afraid of the devil. God's looking at people that will quit, won't quit. They just draw back. They keep drawing back. They stop. They quit. You may be here today. I feel it in my bones. That you're here today and some of you are on the threshold of quitting. You're in the dip. You're in the low part of your life. I'm telling you, things are happening. You don't feel good. Things are not working out. Watch this, y'all ready? Welcome to stinking life. Grow up. We got to grow up. Church, this church is not about me. It's not about you. And this, we'll give God a clap. It's all about him. But do you mean that? Then let him loose. Let him go. Let him do what he wants to do. And don't draw back. Don't draw back. Let, let me listen. And I'm not, I, I wrote my notes. I'm not in it to see what I can get out of God. Here, here's a life changer. Here's a life changer. When you can honestly God say, I'm not in this what I can get out of God. I'm not here at this church what I can get out of this church. Y'all see what I'm saying? I'm not married to Dana Michelle Rafferty to see what I can get out of it. Because if you are, y'all find this out really quick, man. <laughs> Let me go. When your father-in-law talks, that's his baby girl. You better get back behind the pulpit, right? Amen, 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 amen. Yeah. I'm in it today because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. He lives, he reigns, he's still alive. It's, this Bible still works. Then I'm telling y'all, the Holy Ghost still lives. He's alive. You know why nobody don't want nothing to do with the church? Because they look at you. If, would somebody come to this church by the way you talk, by the way you act, in private conversation? Would anybody want anything to do with the church? Oh, oh, it's tight, but it's right. Tight, but it's right. And I wrote this down. If Jesus can die for me, the least I can do is live for him. <laughs> if Jesus can die for me, the least, the least I can do is live for him. I mean, people fuss about tithing 10%. Fuss about tithing. God says, listen, if I was a businessman and someone says, Brian, here's a thousand dollars and all you got to do is give God a hundred dollars. How many of y'all do it every day? Then how come you don't? See, well, I know when the whole thing's up in the house. Going back to puberty, my voice is cracked. I'm 49. <laughs> Yeah. God, I trust you with all things. But that's my money. <laughs> that's my wife. That's my children. That's my job. That's a country song. Let me go ahead and sing that again. ADHD, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, here's what I found out in my, in my life. In my life. How many of y'all getting something out of this? Please. Listen, get something, get something out of it. And again, you know why you don't get nothing out of church? Because you don't put nothing in. If you start, watch, you will only get a return in what you invest in. You'll only get a return in what you invest in. Some of y'all are going to the spiritual ATM. And you're trying to withdraw, but you never made a deposit. Man, it's okay. Here's, here's what I found to be right in my personal, in my personal life. And if you're mad, if, I'm probably talking to you. Because, man, this is the Word of God. And in your spirit, man, you know it's truth. But that fleshly man or woman is overriding your spirit. You know it's true. But, man, your flesh is overriding your spirit right now. Here's what I found to be true in my own personal life. And I want them to put this on the big screen because it's so true. And I do this every, try to every day of my life. Here's what I found to be true in my own personal life. Change your words. Change your life. Leave it up there. Change your words. You need to change your life. Y'all hear me? Change your words. <laughs> you need to change your life. Change your words. 
You need to change your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. So like Jesus when he asked Peter in John chapter 6. Jesus was teaching. And really, I know you know this one. In John chapter 6, Jesus was teaching. And all of a sudden, he was on that road. And first, he had a big old crowd. There was, there was many, many people there. And all of a sudden, Jesus got to a word that they really didn't like. He was still teaching. He looked around, true story, John chapter 6, and everybody had left. Everybody was gone. So like the church today, 10,000 churches locked their door. Where's Jesus at? He's there. The problem is the people are walking away. The people are walking away. Jesus turns around and he looks at Peter. He says, Peter, are you going to be like them? Are you going to stop? Are you going to quit? Are you going to throw in the towel too? Like all these hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people are? And I love Peter. Even though he was a hard head. And even though he would he'd cut your ear off and God would super glue it back on. Peter looked around. I love this. And listen. Where else will I go? <laughs> where else would I go, Jesus? God, who else is going to give me eternal life? Who else is going to help me when I'm in the ditch and I got a problem in my life, God? Who else can I run to? Whew. Feel the Holy Ghost. Where else can I go? <laughs> what else can I do? And I love this. You know when you'll stay and not quit? You, you know when you will stay and not quit on that marriage. You know when you'll stay and not quit in a church? You know when you'll stay and you'll fight for your children? <laughs> I wrote this down. It's so true. When Jesus is all you have. I know it may not be deep, but it was for me. We got a lot of little G's in the world. But when you can honest to God, I'm trying to preach really good and help y'all today. Because somebody's getting ready to quit in the dip. But if you can look, to take your eyes to Zion and say, God is all I got, but he's worth the fight. God's all I got, and I'm going to stay where God's got me at. There's something about the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. But when all you've got, see, the problem with America, the problem with church is this. We got a lot of little G's. We don't pray until we need it. I wish Terry teach me how to blow that thing. One day y'all going to be shocked because B-Raph's going to pick it up and we're going to have a party. Can you honestly, God, listen to me, lean in. Why? Here's how you won't quit in the dip. You won't quit, you won't walk away from God, you won't walk away from people. Watch this, as long as you got people, you're going to have problems. You know how I know? I live with me. I make myself mad. <laughs> Evidently y'all do too. How many of y'all had this moment? You say something, and as soon as it's coming out, you're like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I knew this was going to be tough. When Jesus is all you have, you'll keep fighting. When people quit, I'm just being honest with you. Look, when people quit, they made it all about them and not about him. Get yourself out of God's way. It's hard. I don't like it. I don't like it. I wrote this down. My worst day with Jesus is still better than my best day in this world without Jesus. I don't say it again. My worst day with Jesus is still better than my best day in this world without Jesus. He's all I got. I told Dana the other day, we celebrated 26 years of marriage. Yeah, man. I, I'm, man, we're rocking it out. And I'm still married. My God. And she's still with me. I looked at her. And I mean this. Here's why we're still married. Because I love God more than I love her. He's all I got. Because watch, 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 watch. If I didn't have God. Y'all. 
it'd be bad. I'm telling y'all, look at me. If I didn't have God, I wouldn't have David. But now that I got God, he gave me his little gift called David. Y'all know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't getting this, man. I'm telling y'all, y'all ain't getting it. Yeah, my worst day with Jesus is still better than my best day in this world without Jesus. Church, here's what I'm preaching. Praise team, you guys come. Don't quit in the dip. Everybody say that. Don't quit in the dip. Come on. Don't quit in the dip. It's going to get bad. There's going to be pressure. There's going to be trials. There's going to be circuit. People are going to get sick. People are going to die. One day y'all going to bury me unless the rapture takes place. Listen to me. I done told I done made my arrangements. Put me right here. I done told Greg Ford, turn it up. I ain't in hell quit acting like it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to throw a party. And one of my favorite songs, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. What? Ain't no party. Like... That's why I got notes up here, y'all. Remove the quit option out of your mind. Remove the quit option. Watch. Wipe it away. I'm not, I'm not quitting. I'm going to give hell some hell today. I told Dane, I said, Dane, if you ever try to leave me, I've already got one, one bag packed too. I'll go with you. <laughs> I'll just go with you. Wherever you go, I'm going to go. She's got my rib. That hurts. You know what I'm saying? Look at me. Stay married. Don't be a statistic. Don't be a, it's going to, watch this. Y'all going to have problems. I might do a series on Adam and Eve. It'd be so good and sexy. <laughs> Y'all can't handle it. Y'all can't handle it. With God, <laughs> I wrote this down, I promise. With God, marriage is possible. With God, work is possible. With God, church is possible. With God, people are possible. With God, life is possible. Let me just make it plain and simple. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things, everybody say all things are possible. Do y'all believe that? Because y'all realize when we say amen in here, hell is waiting on you. Yes, and hell comes in many shapes, forms, and fashions. Hell is waiting. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all are looking and saying, right, I'm good. No, you're not. You're crying. You're a mess. You're a mess. So here's what I want to give you, and I'm out of here. How do you not quit in the dip? Because I can preach, and I can lay it out, but if I don't give you tools to live it out, it's just another sermon. So, Bobby Walker, you're 80 years old. Your wife, Miss Peggy, went to be with Jesus Christ. You become a single man very quickly. And I thought about you a lot when I was doing this. How, how do people not quit in the dip? How do people not quit in the dip? So here's what I said. Number one, and write this down in your notes. This is so good. Stay focused. Stay focused. Everybody say, stay focused. It's all about Jesus. That's why I asked God first. I said, how many of y'all believe God is sovereign? And God's going to tell you like he told me the second week of July. If you really believe I am sovereign, get out of my way. Stay focused. Everybody say, stay focused. Yeah. When, when Jesus is all you have. When Jesus is all you have. As much as I love y'all in the praise band, y'all won't be beside me on judgment day. As much as you love Scott, and he would, he would be there. I know Scott. He'd be there. God, can I please stand beside him? He's not, Beth. It's going to be you looking at God in his red eyes like fire. His eyes are like fire. Fire. And you will give an account for your life, not mine. Your life. Your life. Your life and your life. And what if God said these words? Why'd you quit? Why'd you quit? I had all this for you. I was getting ready to open the floodgates of heaven upon your life. 
I was going to show you favor, but you didn't expect no hell? You didn't expect a problem? You know our problem as, 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 as Christians? We don't know how to fight. We are so spoiled. Dr. Patrick Key, a missionary in Kenya, Africa. He called me one day. And he said, Brian, guess what I found today? And I said, well, it's going to wig some of y'all out because you've been in church all your life. But you never. He said, I found a da, a voodoo da. And it had pins in it. And it was me. See, we're so comfortable that if somebody were to say, well, they're into witchcraft or voodooism or, or whatever, man, it wigs us out. And I'm telling you, Dr. Key here, I said, man, what'd you do? He said, I burned it. And I said, then what'd you do? He said, I went to the village. Us. <laughs> we go, oh God, I'm, I'm going to die. Lord Jesus, put your hand of protection upon. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm not going to back off your life. I'm in you. I'm not going to leave you. Where, where I go, you go. Where you go, I go. It's a package deal. If they get you, they get God. If they get God, they get you. No matter where you're at. Stay focused. Number two, keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. This is where I have messed up in my life so much. Because I worry about our children's ministry. I worry about our youth group. And I worry about COVID. And God, what's it going to look like a year from now? And God's like, let me handle that. You just worship me and let me deal with the details. Keep the main thing. Y'all got to help me. I need, look, I, I'm, I'm confessing. I need y'all's help. That if y'all hear something coming out of my mouth that's got fear. Hey, Brian. Man, that's not God. We got to help each other. We got to help each other. I think we're so scared we're going to offend somebody we don't say nothing. Christians shouldn't walk like that. We shouldn't be afraid of each other. We should stand with each other through it all. Good times and bad times. Number three, stay close to the presence of God. Stay close to the presence of God. Stay close to the presence of God. Number four, something I got to do every day. Examine your heart daily. Examine your heart daily. Why am I thinking that? Is that truth or is that a lie? Is that me or is that the devil or is that God? You got to examine your heart every single day, every day. Number five, keep a short list of wrongs. Y'all hear me? Look at me. I love y'all. I'm going to speak truth over you. Keep a short list of wrongs. Watch. People's going to do us bad. How many of y'all know people going to do bad? My question to you is, let me reverse this. How are you going to receive it? Because how you receive it is what you'll give back. Keep a short list of wrongs. Keep a short list of wrongs. Forgive quickly. Forgive quickly. Everybody say, forgive quickly. I'm talking to you. Forgive quickly. And number six is going to be something like an oxymoron to a Baptist church. But number six, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, pray in the Holy Ghost. Listen, the enemy knows English. Look, y'all, please, one more minute. The enemy knows English. One language he does not know is with, with a prayer language. When you speak in the Spirit, it confuses the enemy. Daniel chapter 10. I can back up what I'm talking about. Well, I just don't believe it. Then you don't believe 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8, Jude chapter 1. Whoa, hey, hey. 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 Then you don't believe the Bible. This may be my last sermon. It's okay. I'm good. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 So, I went a little bit longer than I thought. But I do not apologize. 
You say, Brian, how? How do I pray in the Holy Spirit? Ask God. Ask God. Ask God. Ask God. And watch this, watch this. I'm, can I teach? There's some cray crazy out there. Yep, they ain't no full of the Holy Ghost. They're full of something else. They get up here and say Coca-Cola, Cola, Coca. It's on water tower bypass. Take a lift. But there is a language. Oh, let me know what God just told me. We're not going to speak English when we get to heaven. Aramaic. How many of y'all have ever spoke Aramaic? I haven't. I double dog dare you to fuss with Jesus when we get there. Is this tongues? God, I just didn't believe in that. He may zap you. Acts chapter 26. Check it out. It's great. Great. Bible's, Bible's good. Let's study it. Amen. Let's grow together. Yes, there's crazy out there. Yes, there's fake people out there. There's also fake people in here who hadn't even spoke tongues today. I'm done. Really. <laughs> All right. Y'all stand to your feet. I love you. Look at me. I love y'all. Love you. Love you so much. I just don't want y'all to live a half-blessed life. I want y'all to live a full and an abundant life. A full and abundant life. So in Jesus Christ's name, may God bless you. May God keep you. May His face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And may he give you peace. This altar is open. You can make your seat a, an altar. All I'm asking y'all to do is have a talk with Jesus. He loves his children. So in Jesus' name, Father God, have your way. Bless these people. Use them for your glory. I've done what you have told me to do, Father God. Lord, just teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us, God. In Jesus Christ's name. Don't quit in the don't quit in the don't quit in the dip the dip's coming it's here it's here but don't quit in the dip in Jesus name